dog does that sometimes. I'll be what, playing. Claps, no, I'll be, I'll be playing with him on the floor. He will just kind of like sneak up to my head and just go. <laughs> right in my ear. Uh-huh. This week's Weird Wednesday is sponsored by the Ghost Rec Files of SS Andrea Doria. Hi guys and welcome to this week's Weird Wednesday. So we hope you're all enjoying the sunshine. I know we are. Yes. Uh, it's nice and warm in our oh, studio today. Studio lights. Um, and we hope that you're having a great week so far. Uh, so let's jump straight into the news. Uh, so there has been a sh- reported shark attack off the coast of Bantham in the UK. Uh huh. Shark so, attack. Yep. <laughs> So, um, so people, we, we need to urge you to not go into the waters. Uh, even in uh, Devon, sharks are patrolling our waters. Um, teacher Rich Thompson was surfing at Bantham uh, when he was attacked by a shark. Technically, um, <laughs> he, he was attacked, um, but he, uh, he only sustains a, a few cuts and a bit of a bruised leg. He was attacked. His girlfriend, he nearly died. His girlfriend didn't believe him when he first came home. It's like, oh, I got attacked by a shark. She's like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> she still doesn't believe him now. Uh, so, what massive, terrifying shark did this horrendous attack? Uh, well, it was a one meter long smooth hound shark, they reckon. Um, they just look like a big fish. <laughs> Uh, so Rich was surfing the waters when he felt something on his leg. He turned around and, uh, and saw the shark on his thigh uh, and then sort of hit it and the shark swam off. That was it. That's the attack. Yep. <laughs> uh, so again, technically the cuts on his hands were self-inflicted. Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, <so laughs> yeah, he, he, he had it. some... Some scuffs, and yeah, funny enough, their skin's quite like sandpaper. So yeah, so really, he only got bruised. Yeah. So the shark attack, <laughs> he got bruised. Shark kind of swam up to him, kind of bumped his legs. He thumped it. Do you yeah, know what? Came I, off reckon, worse. I know. All right. Okay. So the shark came up. So oh, well, I want to play. I reckon he went <laughs> to punch it. The shark swam off, and he punched his own leg. <laughs> That's where the bruise came. Yeah. From. So he broke bruises. Like, oh, what am I going to do? And then he just scuffed his hand up. <laughs> On his surfboard. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> so stupid. Keep going. Keep going. That's what I say. It's stupid. There you go. Uh, so, uh, so the bruise, Rich describes it as quite sizable. How big was it? Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's about three inches across. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, this is just a silly story. What was what was really good was the. Um, the tabloids and the news, they kind of, not sensationalized it, but they were like, oh, after his ordeal. And the way they were like, oh, it was so funny to read. Um, yeah, we'll put a link to uh, to the BBC coverage below. I mean, technically, yeah, it is a shark attack, but um, yeah, whole household pets can do more damage than, uh, than what Rich got. Yeah, all, all I've got to do is stroke, you know how fickle cats can be. I'm like, one minute they're like, nice, and the next minute, <laughs> Oh yeah, cheers. Yeah. You know John went into Beals yesterday to go and get some sandwiches. Yeah, so, oh! 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 <coughs> so yeah, on that delightful note, we've got a hook, bait, and eat mark. A restaurant called Zao 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 Zao. There you go. Totally offended at least half <laughs> of China right there. Do apologise. Uh, anyway, this restaurant is soon to be opening up in Chelsea. But what's so special about this chain? Well, you don't just order from the menu, you get a fishing rod, fishing pole, you get bait, and you literally fish for your food. Once you've caught the fish that you wanted, you hand it over to the chefs, they grill it up and serve it up on a plate for you. Okay. So literally, it's like, oh, that one. Like, like you know, you, you get the lobsters. Yeah, that yeah. one looks tasty, but this one, you actually have to have some skill. Yep. Yeah and catch it. I mean, I always feel bad seeing lobsters in the restaurant tanks just kind of sat there. Yeah, I can't do it. You know, yeah, you know, seeing the massive tanks of fish that... <laughs> Apologise about that, guys. Uh, anyway, so, uh, the, you know, seeing them in the tanks always, you know, it's not very nice. Watching them getting picked, you know, ready to be eaten, just seems to me a bit, a bit weird. It's a bit of a weird thing. Yeah, it's, it's like going to an aquarium full of fish. Yeah. Like, oh, that's pretty. Getting your fish eaten right. right down. <laughs> Oh, look at that. That'll, that'll go lovely with some a slice of lemon and some chips. <laughs> anyway, I know, you know, you know, I know how the world works. 
I know how you know when it comes to food, you, you get things and you, you know, you know, yeah, things. the fish has to die. The fish has to die, but yeah, it's just a bit weird seeing it in a restaurant. Yeah, and you know, if you're really country. hungry, just kind of like, oh, just bite. No, do you know what I would do? <laughs> I'd go in there with a net. <laughs> I will have everything, please. But yeah, no doubt this is going to cause some heat in Chelsea, and it probably won't be. It's either going to won't be open very long because it's going to offend people, or yeah. it's going to be a staple hold of Chelsea, and it's going to be like the number one. I don't know. I think it might thing. fizzle out because the novelty will go. We're bored, mate. Like I'm just, I've been sitting there for three hours, yeah. none of these goldfish are nibbling. <laughs> Right. I mean, I mean, I'm going to note that that also links in nicely with that lobster who's 137 years old. And yeah, he's just been released. Louis, Louis, or something. Um, yeah. He was pardoned and released. <laughs> pardoned. Pardoned. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we'll put a link to that story below. Yeah, it's like a 132-year-old lobster yeah. uh, living in some restaurant. They they pardoned him yeah. and released him into the bay. We were going to talk about it, but there's not really like literally that's the story. <laughs> uh, so a Florida community is outraged. A massive alligator turned up in a South Florida neighborhood. Nothing unusual in no. Florida. Um, well, yeah. Fearing for their children's safety, residents called a local gator trapper. Uh, the alligator in question was a female who had nested in the area. So because of this, the residents thought that the uh, the trapper uh, the trapper would uh, would capture the gator. All oh, these are hard words, uh, humanely. Uh, but unfortunately, that that wasn't the case. <clears throat> Uh, as the trapper laid the trap, humane traps, uh, residents started showing up to see the gator being captured. Um, again, I'd like to sort of stress that they thought it would be um, humane. Uh, Proper humane. Like you see the humane traps for the squirrels where they go in and it blocks yeah, them. Yeah, it in. just closes them, gets them in a and box. You can, yeah. Um, anyway. Sure enough, the uh, the female gator shown up and uh, and went into the trap and then <laughs> snap. <clears throat> Uh, in front of everybody, the trap snapped the gator's neck, killing it outright. <laughs> so yeah, the thing is, like, what I didn't put in the script is like this neighbourhood. They're very loving towards animals. They love all of that sort of thing. So they've got peacocks, they've got pigs, they've got everything in there, you know. But obviously, this gate was a threat. But they wanted it to be done humanely. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, so now the gator wouldn't have been in stress or pain or anything, so its death was humane, it was quick. Um, yeah, so technically it was a humane trap, but it didn't survive. Yeah, uh, it's just not quite what the neighbourhood really wanted. Uh, but now a full investigation has been started to find out who called this trapper and told him to kill it. Um, yeah. Uh, in similar news, an alligator was found trespassing on a cattle ranch in Texas. Uh, so um, similar, the uh, the cowboys did what they do best, and they lassoed the monster ten foot gator. I love it. Um, to keep it away from their livestock, uh, cattle rancher Han Canover said that he was a dangerous one, uh, but he was leaving the place dead or alive. Oh, was he talking about himself? Man? <laughs> Uh, so after a group of friends helped him detain the animal, licensed trappers came to uh, sort of take the beast away, but actually one of the official licensed guys was bitten trying to get it onto, uh, onto some kind of trailer. So, um, so what we need, what the guys in Florida really needed was a cowboy. Yeah. He, they would have done it humanely. Bring it back, just with a rope. Um, release it, find the like, yeah. Hog tie it. Yep. And just haul it off. Yeah. But it's dead. <laughs> <clears throat> Poor kids. Yeah. Uh, so now it's time to plug another Simply Scuba product. Uh, the Simply Scuba snorkel bag is designed to carry all of your essential snorkeling gear. Uh, the fin pocket has been designed to fit full foot fins and adjustable fins. Uh, you also have a pocket for your snorkel and a specifically designed mask pocket on the front as well. A single shoulder strap has a mobile phone holder and there's even a secure internal pocket for all of your money. Uh, so this bag is great for all types of snorkelers and scuba divers. Just a handy little bag, just to put all yeah. your essentials in. Especially with people going on holiday nowadays, you just want something simple, small, simple. You want one bag to have pretty much all your gear in. Yeah, and fins can be quite awkward. Yeah. They're, they're not as sensible. Yeah, shape. exactly. It's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. Sneaky cuttlefish. <laughs> A recent study has come up with something rather weird. The University of whatever that is, uh, Ryukyu, Caius. I know Caius, I know that's Caius. Ryukyus? Ryukyus. Yeah, see, I'm hitting it up really well this episode, guys. Doing it well, doing it well. Anyway, they've been studying the behaviours of cuttlefish. 
Using shells of hermit crabs, cuttlefish mimic the movements of the crabs to get closer to their prey to attack them without the other fish. That's get crafty, wise. clever. That's sneaky, no, no, sneaky. No, no, no. I'm a cuttlefish, I'm a cuttlefish. <laughs> no, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, hermit crabs are what they call, you know, they're filter feeders, so they don't pose a threat to many fish, if any fish whatsoever. No. So the cuttlefish have realised this and now are taking advantage of it. Oh. Using this technique, cuttlefish can hunt twice as much as they did without being those sneaky cuttlefish. <laughs> What's even more weird though is that the cuttlefish that they used to study have actually were born and control, in controlled settings at the university and had never come across a live hermit crab. But when the shell was placed in the tank, it entered the tank and it started mimicking movements of a hermit crab. <laughs> So, because of that, it was actually able to hunt very successfully. So, yeah, it proves that the DNA is completely instilled into these cuttlefish. Yeah. It's a really weird thing. Yeah, I, I did a lot of studies on behaviour and whatnot. And yeah, there is a lot of information transferred sort of innately. Ooh, but um, it's, it's clever that you can just, like, see a shell and you're like, huh, if I pretend to be a crab, I'll get yeah. closer to these and then they just become twice as efficient hunters. Yeah, it's nuts. They're clever. They're, <laughs> they're sneaky. Uh, so two heads are better than one, it seems. Excellent! Uh, fishermen off the coast of the Netherlands got a bit of a shock when they caught a, uh, a now officially confirmed, the first two-headed porpoise. Oh. I want to go left, I want to go right. <laughs> Uh, so these types of cases are ultra rare, and so far it's just the tenth known case of conjoined twins in cetaceans. Uh, so sadly, fearing that they might get fined and lose their license, uh, the fishermen took a couple of pictures and returned it to the ocean. Okay. Yeah. They didn't want to. Obviously, they didn't want to get in trouble. They weren't too sure about it. Yeah. So rather than them losing their livelihood, yeah. rather than because obviously when it dragged up in the net, I think it was dead anyway. Oh. So it wasn't, it wasn't alive, although, this way, this way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't want to get into trouble. Uh, the pictures they took uh, have been sort of handed over to researchers to study, and although the researchers would have loved to have had the actual physical body to study, uh, they're very pleased with the images that, uh, that they've been given to them, and, uh, and they can study them um, to, uh, to kind of check it out and see what's going it's on. It's just a weird thing, like nature just throws a purple. Yeah. Maybe it just swam too close to Fukushima and then... Yeah. Three eyed fish. Alright, we eat the light! <laughs> Wait a minute. One, two, three. Simpsons. Frisky for dolphins! <laughs> I'm gonna mess this one up, by the way, because I didn't write it. I, I originally had a story about drones, it's not drones, which I'll link at the bottom, but someone didn't like it. I thought it was a bit boring, even though, you know, it's drones and snot. Well, it's not, it's cool. <laughs> so, frisky for dolphins. Anyway, scientists have been conducting some serious research, basically how to move dolphins. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Australian team, of course it's the Australian, Australian team, of course it is, <laughs> found that the male humpback dolphins adopt a special banana pose and do <laughs> <laughs> What is this? <laughs> it's Weird Wednesday. <laughs> it's okay, so yeah, so they've done a special banana pose and, uh, and they put on a soggy sponge hat. <laughs> to, uh, to attract mates as part of a, uh, a multimodal social sexual display uh, by collecting the, yeah, by collecting these hard to get sponges. Apparently the, the sponges they're hard to get off the ground so only the strong males can do it. Um, and um, <laughs> oh my god. They, they kind of they either hold it in their mouth or they kind of balance it on their heads to try and so just to show off to the ladies. Um, unfortunately, like most male displays of prowess, the females completely ignore it. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> the banana shape of these sponges. <laughs> um, so uh, so they, they figure it might be a bit of a crossover behaviour as dolphins have been seen collecting these sponges and actually using them to protect their noses from sharp rocks and uh, shells and stuff Clever. whilst foraging. So they think it might be sort of part of that behaviour crossing over onto this one and it just doesn't work. Uh, so if you want to get up close and personal to a dolphin, uh, the trick is to not wear a sponge on your head or don a banana pose. But have 
A coat full of pufferfish. Yeah, they like their pufferfish. Yes, a coat full of pufferfish. And you'll be a dolphin's best friend. <laughs> Uh, so that's it for this week's Weird Wednesday. If you missed it, why not check out last week's Scuba Tube? That'll be in a link up there yeah, somewhere. Boring. Weird Wednesday's more fun. Weird Wednesday is much more fun. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. <laughs>